Hello mga Kapkit Angels! Welcome back for another Mathinate episode. This is Teacher Mika and this is Teacher Joy Me. Today, we will learn about undefined terms in geometry. After going through this module, you are expected to represent point, line, and plane using concrete and pictorial models. Before we proceed, I will show you some images. Now, give me ideas you can associate with these pictures. Alright, very good. So these have something to do with lines and patterns which obviously introduces a new chapter that we're going to talk about in this session which is Geometry. Are you all ready to explore the world of geometry? Okay, great. So geometry comes from the Greek word geo, meaning earth, and metri, meaning measurement. So technically, Geometry is a branch of mathematics that studies the sizes, shapes, positions, angles, and dimensions of things. Now, what do you call this one? Very good! So this is a point. How about this one? Alright, this is a line. And lastly, Correct! This looks like a square. But why did I ask you this? It is because today, we're going to talk about undefined terms. These are basic terms which cannot be defined but can be described as what you have done earlier. I just show you the pictures and you already know their names without me having to define them for you. In Euclidean geometry, the geometric terms point Line and plane are all undefined terms and are purely mental concepts or ideas. However, we can use concrete objects around us to represent these ideas. These three terms are used as the basis for defining other terms in geometry. First, we have the point, which indicates a location or position in space. Now, Will you get a clean sheet of paper and draw a point? Okay, so I guess we all drew the same. A point is the most basic geometric concept. All other geometric figures are made up of a collection of points. As described, it has no dimension, no length, no width, no thickness, and it does not occupy an area. So basically, it can be merely represented by a dot as shown here. But how do we name a point? So we may use any letter in the alphabet, so this could be named as point A. A dot and the capital letter A are just the capital letter A alone. Moreover, in the coordinate plane, a point is named by an ordered pair X and Y. Second, we have the line, which is a straight, Continuous arrangement of points that extend indefinitely in both directions. So how do we describe a line? It has no width, no thickness, but it has an infinite length. A line is assumed to be straight. Also, a line is drawn with arrowheads on both ends. A line is named by a single lowercase script letter. In this figure, we may name it as line M, or by at least any two points on the line. So this figure may also be named as line AB or line BA. A line symbol may also be placed above the letters. The edge of a ruler can be used as a representation of a line. Lastly, we have the plane. A plane is a set of points that contained in a flat surface and extends indefinitely in all directions. This time, a plane is a two-dimensional figure. It has length and width but no thickness. A plane is drawn as a four-sided figure resembling a tabletop or a parallelogram. A plane is named by a single script capital letter, let's say this is plane N, or by at least three points in the plane which are not on the same line. So let's say this is plane ABD 
or plane ABCD. Moreover, a plane is like an infinite sheet of paper. There are some objects around us that could represent a point, a line, or a plane. Now, identify the following if they represent a point, a line, or a plane. Are you ready? Okay, so number one, corner of a table. Is it a point, a line, or a plane? Very good, it is a point. Number two, edge of a blackboard. Is it a point, a line, or a plane? Correct! It is a representation of a line. And number three, top of a box. Yes, it is a representation of a plane. Next, clothesline. Does it represent a point, a line, or a plane? Okay, obviously it is a line. Number five. Star in the sky as seen from the earth. Yes, it is a good picture of a point. And lastly, a wall. Very good. It does represent a plane. The figure below shows illustrations of points, lines, and planes. For your first drill, answer the following. Number one. Name the point or points on the interior of the circle. Number two, give other name or names for line P. And number three, name the plane that can be formed by the three points in the interior of the circle. Here are some things to remember on point, line, and plane. First, two points determine a line. Second, Three points not on the same line determine a plane. Third, two intersecting lines determine a plane. Fourth, two parallel lines determine a plane. Fifth, a line and a point not on the line determine a plane. The three undefined terms in plane geometry are point, line, and plane. Relationships between the above objects are defined and describe in the activities that follow. Let's have collinear points. These are points on the same line. Here is an example. Points A, B, and C are on the same line. Next, we have coplanar points or lines. These are points or lines that are on the same plane. Here is an example. We can say here that on plane A, Line PQ and line RS are coplanar lines. On the other hand, we can say that we also have coplanar points. These are point P, point Q, point R, and point S. Let's have some examples. Using the figure below, name the following. Number 1. Two collinear points. We have point E and point H. But remember... That's just one of the many possible examples of coplanar points in the given figure. Number two, two non-collinear points. We have point J and point F. Again, you can list as many as possible. Number three, three coplanar points. We have point F, point K, and point I. And lastly, two pairs of coplanar lines. We have line EI and line JK. We also have line AB and line CD. Let's now have the other geometric terms on lines. First, we have the intersecting lines, which are two distinct lines with a common point. Here is an example. Where line IJ and line GH are intersecting lines and point K is the point of intersection. Next, we have the concurrent lines, which are two or more lines that have a common point. Here's an example, where line IJ, line GH, and line LM are concurrent lines, and point K is the point of concurrency. Third, we have the parallel lines, which are coplanar lines that do not meet. Example, Line NO is parallel to line PQ. 
or line I is parallel to line M. And lastly are the skew lines, which are lines that do not lie on the same plane. In this figure, line AB and line GF are skew lines. That ends our lesson today. We hope you learned something. See you on our next episode, Calculate Angels. Keep safe!